Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape and we've got an exciting, exciting project. If we can do a lot in one day, imagine what we can do in 40. And so this project is gonna be so, so incredible. I've been tagging stones now for over six months, been working with the customers for over a year to do this project and now it's finally happening. We've got a 3,000 gallon reservoir, infinity edges, we have a wreck pot, we have multiple waterfalls, we have meandering streams. This could be one of my top 10, no, it's gonna be one of my top 10 water features of all time. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Are you guys ready to see something awesome? I am gonna take you back into a backyard that we've been working at almost nine total weeks. I met the Camisas back in October of 2021, so it's been almost two years in the making to show you something absolutely spectacular. Come on. So it all starts right here. And when we talk about a transformation, we wanted to not just create a transformation in the backyard over there. We wanted to create a transformation from the beginning all the way to the end. And it starts with a feeling. And so we changed this entire space. This actually used to be a patio sitting over here where everybody just kind of sat down and enjoyed living in the outdoors in this space. We wanted to actually change the feeling you had when you came into the backyard. So we turned this way more into a, I guess like a foyer in a house. This is a foyer into the backyard. So it's just kind of an entrance into the backyard. And if you look just behind me over here, the one thing I love most about this space is that spillway bowl. That spillway bowl just pulls you into the entire area. So you come through this space and you've got this raised planting bed. And anytime I can raise stuff and create different elevations in what was a relatively flat backyard, it's gonna have a different feeling. This feels much more of like a sunken patio now. And then you get to the corner of the house and your feeling totally changes because you're gonna look to the right and you're gonna be welcomed by not one waterfall, but a whole lot of different waterfalls, massive rocks, unbelievable planting. You guys have to just come see this. So if that was the foyer, this would be the library, the family room, the kitchen, I don't know. I guess we can call it a kitchen because there's an outdoor grill over here, but it's definitely my favorite spot. No, it's definitely one of my favorite spots because there's so many awesome little vignettes throughout this whole thing. I do really like this spot though. I love this spot because it's a little bit more quaint. It's really built for Harry and his wife just to kind of sit here, chill every day after work. There's a much gentler sounding waterfall here. It's got that deep babbly brook sound coming through. That water still has a lot of motion without a lot of sound. And I love the way that water just kind of twists and turns around this grouping of boulders in here. And we kept it simple, right? You don't have to use a lot of rock to create a really cool waterfall. This waterfall is built out of like four rocks. Splits around one that's kind of coming in there. It's got that deep, deep sound. It's really thick and then I love the way it kind of just comes and crashes up against this really formal contemporary patio here. Still got the spillway bowl over in the backdrop over there and then everything just disappears down into a 3,000 gallon reservoir underneath this patio. So there was a lot of time and thought that went into this space. A lot of mechanical time only after 28 years of building ponds have I gotten to the point where I could actually visualize something like this and build it at the same time. So I love, love this space. The other thing that's great is you can't help but still see the waterfalls off in the distance. For anybody that comes and visits it for the first time, of course they're gonna be pulled this way and wanna go discover more and more what's going on. And here's where it really, really starts changing. The sound changes. We lose the audible sound of that babbly brook waterfall and it turns way more into Niagara Falls back over here. I'm exaggerating slightly. But Elena said two years ago, she said, Brian, the waterfall that speaks to me the most that I've seen is your big giant waterfall at Aquascape. Our negative edge waterfall on our signature swim pond out there at Aquascape. I said, well, that would be a little bit big in your backyard, but I think I can achieve what you're looking for. And I think we nailed it. Jack and I really spent a lot of time thinking about how we were gonna build this waterfall. 
and we wanted something big and kind of spread out. So instead of having 60,000 gallon per hour pumps, or actually 120,000 gallon per hour pumps, we just spread the waterfall out. Making sure that this thing was gonna be dramatic from outside, but more importantly, the whole thing is designed to be visible from inside the house. And that's where the real magic comes from. So this entire waterfall was built from looking at how those rocks were gonna line up from inside the house. If we can make it look good inside, then of course it looks good outside. So what you're gonna notice as I come into these different little vignettes, like we described them before, we've got this one here, but your mind and your eyes just kind of keep wandering around. Of course, we put a bridge in. No pond is complete or no great design is complete without a bridge. And you guys have heard me say this a thousand times. If there's a bridge, there's not a person in the world that can resist crossing it. And this one's no different. But what I really like about this one is this bridge leads to a stone staircase and you don't know where the stone staircase is gonna take you. And so, of course, you want to go that way. And then you see a pathway that disappears back behind some Nordic spires. And where does it lead you to? And if it goes that way, does it also go to the right? And so you keep discovering. One of my favorite designs is one that creates mystery. The one that kind of pulls you through the backyard. The one thing you've got to remember too, this is not a big backyard. It is only 30 feet from the edge of this patio to the Arbor Vitae's back over there. And so what's happening in a very small amount of space is pretty unbelievable. The other thing we really wanted to make sure happened is no matter where you were at, you were seeing different vantage points and discovering different angles of things. Of course, my favorite spot, the library, outdoor kitchen slash area over there, looks great when you're looking upstream, but we also wanted to look good when you're looking downstream. And when you look downstream, you really start paying attention to some of the really, really interesting rocks that have been put in here. Elena's favorite rock is this one just behind me over here. I love this boulder. My favorite boulder is the boulder just behind that with all the lichens, the different bubbly contours to it. Perry's got favorite rocks all over the property, but you really start paying attention to different areas here. And from this spot, you still see the spillway bowl. You don't really focus on it as much because you've got the big giant waterfalls over here. And like I said before, we really spent a lot of time on the waterfalls. Yes, I wanted to create a big five foot sheet of water coming down, but even the little tributaries that come over on the right hand side look great. We wanted a big focal waterfall where water's just shooting out over the top, but we also have little tributaries all over the place on that one. Bubbly type rocks starting over there, little splits all over the place. Certain splits you don't even see unless you're actually inside the house, which I wanted to do, making it special for them when they're at their, the kitchen counter, making it special for them when they're at their kitchen table. Last thing we did in this space is we created some giant destination boulders. I knew after getting to know them over two years, that they were definitely gonna be the people that wanted to interact with this. So we created a really gentle beach where they could walk in to the whole thing, land on a giant destination boulder, and then keep going and going and going if they wanted to. So they can get all the way up by this waterfall, sit down on a rock, and actually get underneath this if they wanted to. We've even set this up so if they wanna put some lawn chairs in this area, they could set some lawn chairs and just kind of feel those negative ions pour all over them if they so wanted to. So the whole idea of that dry stream bed was really just to tie everything together. You notice the whole back side of the house is windows, windows, windows. So we wanted to make sure it didn't just stop. The big reason for the dry stream bed is if I didn't have the dry stream bed, that entire space would have had to have been landscaped. A bunch of plants there would have ended up blocking the view of what was back beyond it over here. And from Perry's office, I wanted that dry stream bed to actually take your line of sight right to this waterfall over here. So when you're inside his office, now there's no obstructions and it looks like it's part of the entire feature. Dry stream bed is just a nice little accent, but there was more behind it. It was actually part of the design to make sure you could still see the waterfall from inside of his office. So this would probably be my second favorite area. No, it's one of my second favorite. There's second, thirds, fourth, there's no, there's no order. But what I loved about this 
Do you remember that discovery, that mystery? You come up through that stone staircase, you follow the crushed stone pathway, and you get to a deck that's gonna sit up here, and you have no idea that there's a deck up here, whether you're sitting down in that first area we started from, or you're sitting over there, that lower patio, or even if you're inside the house, you have no idea that there's a deck up here, and the deck cantilevers over a five foot deep rec pond. And this is one of the smallest rec ponds we've ever built. In fact, it's the smallest rec pond we've ever built. The pond is only 16 feet long and nine feet wide, but it looks enormous because it just goes straight down. We used a black permeable chip on the bottom, which gives it kind of this infinity depth. And then it's got this neat little kind of bluish color to it that reflects off of the stone that we use for the walls and everything else. This was a much different design than normal. Usually the rec pond would be down below, closer to the house, have big waterfalls falling into it. I wanted to move the rec pond up on top and let you discover something very unique when you got up here and Perry uses this all the time. Perry is a chiropractor, is what it says on his business card, but he's way more than just a chiropractor. He's very in tune with like the stone and the energy and the water and everything else. He loves getting in there. Right now the water's at 64 degrees, I think, and he's been in here every single day. He just loves the energy of it all. So you've got this deck that's coming over and, and right now the deck's not finished. Um, the one thing we couldn't get done for the video was get the material for the decking in in time for the video. But at least you get to see the shape of it. This is gonna get covered with a composite decking that kind of matches the house over in there. The other thing you're gonna notice is some stainless steel handrails here. Aesthetically, it doesn't really match, but because Perry and Elena were gonna get in here, I wanted to make sure that it was always safe for them. And when we've done stone steps in the past, those stone steps can get slippery. This is a company that has non-slip treads. So you can walk in here barefoot and not worry about slipping all over the place. So you come down in, it's gonna take you into what's almost, well that's as far as I'm gonna go, cause I'll get pretty wet if I go any further. But it goes down into a two foot deep area. This was really important so Perry could ease himself into those frigid, frigid waters when it gets down below, you know, 40 degrees. So we can go down in here. You can see we've got tons of jets shooting all over the place. So lots of circulation from here, lots of circulation from the corners, and then there's five more jets on the bottom of the pond. Turning, turning, turning. This thing fills up from the flow of the pumps and then spills back over that waterfall over there. Not often do I get jealous of some of the projects that we've built, but I am definitely jealous of this one. I want this in my yard. So we keep talking about that mystery and the pathway and the design and everything else. And one thing I didn't want to do is like let it end up here. Yes, the water feature part's done, but the journey is not. And so when you get here, just over my shoulder, you see more stone steps. And so you want to discover where those things go. And one of my favorite things to build on this project were the stone steps. And when we do these stone steps, we still like to try to twist and turn them and twist and turn them. So as you go down the staircase, you keep discovering and discovering and discovering. This would be my third favorite spot. Again, in no particular order, but I love the feeling here. It's not a sunken patio, but it feels extremely sunken because we built everything up around us using big, thousand pound and three thousand and four thousand pound boulders to create almost this grotto feel down here and then we tuck a little fire boulder right down in here where Perry can come out here every morning with this cup of coffee get away from the hectic commotion of everything back over there a little bit more party entertaining over there this way more zen relaxing you kind of still hear the sound of the waterfall off in the distance he can come down here sit in his chair turn the key turn on his fire and just enjoy this space and from here the big windows even put off a reflection of things that are going on in the other space and he can still see waterfalls from the reflection and then still go right back into his office 
and hopefully try to get some work done. How he does that with all of this being such a distraction, I have no idea. I would literally live out here. I can see myself taking naps out here. I can see Perry taking naps out here. It's just such an incredible space. I'm hoping that you guys actually can capture or feel the difference in the feeling that these spaces have because it's really more about a feeling. With the height of the house, the height of the boulders, the height of the landscape, the sunken feeling, the texture of all the rocks, the texture of all the different plants, it's just so incredible. I encourage you guys to try to get out here sometime in the near future. Look for it to be on future pond tours because it's a magical, magical thing and only being here in person actually helps you feel that way. So as I sit here thinking about the three months it's taken us to build this thing, I just kind of sit back and I say, wow. Like it's just, it's so incredible. I wanted to give a couple huge shout outs, big thanks to Team Aquascapes, Jack Kaczynski, Tyler, David, Chris Z, Franco, Billy from Texas, everybody that's helped contribute. Jeff from Premier doing all the hardscape, Matt from Wasco. And then I think more important than all of those guys, because yes, they are important, but it's our customer. Perry and Elena, thank you guys so much. This doesn't happen without you guys, and you guys trusting in the fact that Team Aquascape could do this for you. Uh, it was fun, you guys let us just kind of roll with it. Never ever did you say, no, I want to do it this way or that way. You always just said, Brian, what would you do? And this is what I would do. This is what we would do. So thank you guys so much. It's just the beginning of a beautiful, beautiful friendship. <laughs> and I really, really appreciate you guys. All you guys that have been watching this kind of come together. Thank you so much for the long journey. It has been a long one. Hopefully you enjoy everything that we put together. Tell me your favorite part because as again, I sit back here. I don't know if it's the spillway bowl. I don't know if it's the patio. I don't know if it's my favorite waterfall that comes crashing up against that formal patio. Is it the bridge over on my side? Is it the big waterfall? Is it the skinny waterfall? Is it the rec pond? Aquascape's smallest rec pond to date. Is it the pathways, the stone staircases, the landscape? Oh my God, there's just so much. Tell me your favorite parts and then you guys know the routine. Like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends because we're doing another one of these next week. Here we go, bye.